Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoy. And if you do, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you stay up to date on further content. Greetings and welcome aboard the USS Shadow Star. I am Captain Richard, aka the Renegade, and this is a Starship Review video within Star Trek Online. Where, well, well guys, we've taken a look at the latest and newest iterations of Temple Warship, Warbird. And now it's time to take a look at what inspired the design of the Federation version, the Edison class. So, I trust that whether you are Dominion, Romulan or Federation, whether you're an artisan, an engineer, a commander, an admiral, captain, if you're part of intelligence, temporal agent, or part of the command structure, please get comfortable, grab yourself a drink and a snack, and allow me to introduce to you guys the interesting looking Hoover class. Uh, well, yeah, uh, mm. where do we even begin with this ship? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna have to be straight up honest with you. If this ship never came to STO, I would not consider it a loss. Seeing it within the wonderful Star Trek Discovery, this ship was one of those ones where it was in the background and it stayed there for me. I had absolutely no interest in it. Even when Trekyards was able to get a hold of some images and actually show us a few basic designs of what the ships were looking like, I had no interest there either. Along with a couple of pages that I check out, those got some even better images of this ship and this one just still never grew on me. Till we got it in game. Now I'll be honest, there is still one thing which I really think is hideous. But, positives aside, I don't consider the whole thing hideous. First of all, let's just go straight on the top section of the ship. Now, a tivit to the lower section and centralized in the saucer. This ship does appear to not have a bridge, or should I say, I'm pretty sure the bridge is on the top. But it does not have a window, which is so sort of queuing to something there, which I do believe is an aired feel of this ship as a whole. Now, taking a look at this ship, straight off a first mark, the first thing I feel from her is Centaur class, cross Miranda class. Mostly in the fact that she has a wonderful saucer with a raised section at the back of her. In her case, I believe the bit that's about the size of the bridge area, or that dome formation for where the bridge would be, that goes a little bit wider behind it. If you go straight back along there, I reckon you're still just following back the main part of the ship. However, those side parts, I'm pretty sure those are the hangar bays. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I'm looking at those, the sort of cut-ins for those bits, and it just feels too much like to me like they were meant to draw back and open up a huge hangar base which can just launch round after round after fighters. Which, um, as, as we already know, uh, you can do now within Star Trek apparently because Discovery Enterprise. But you've also got the fact that you could probably have normal shuttles in there to deploy at rapid pace or a bunch of them. Um, I highly doubt runabouts would be in there, but oh, were they even properly runabouts at this? There was runabouts, but they weren't quite what they are in later periods. Suffice to say, though, it's a very smooth-looking ship. I've noticed you've got minor, minor textural grooves just going up down either side of the second dome formation that's just under the bridge. So you go down the bridge on a sharp dome formation, then you've got this more shallow dome. Then you got those weird cut grooves and then it keeps going down a little bit more until you reach the lips where it goes swings on the slide and it's just rather grooved and aggressive. Thank you, window. 
Now, moving back on the ship, to look towards the back, should I say, apart from those hideous fins, which I will not comment on, because I, by this point, you guys know I hate the fins. Well, fins like that. And there's this weird textual cutout here that I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. Personally, I feel like it might be some kind of stabilizer or charging unit. Basically, some, or maybe it's even a ventil venting point where you can vent out heat exchanges and all that. But it's a very interesting point to be in. Could be a shield generating platform. I have no idea. What does get me straight away on the top of the ship is... Where's the escape pods? Well, I don't want to be on this ship, I think I'll die! Doesn't seem to be any escape pods whatsoever on here. Well... I'd say the least, let's move down towards the back now. <laughs> you guys probably noticed something, but I'm going to ignore that for now. First of all, we'll start on with the neck. Well, guess what part of the ship I don't like? Fucking neck! What is that? What a lot! What is that? Go away! Well, actually, at the very worst, you see that? You see where we got that sloping part which has the torpedo launch on it? Slash that out and lift it up. There we go. Perfect. Perfectly fine. Or half it. Half it at least! It's too big! Oh, excuse me. Sneezing aside. Yeah, that neck is horrible to me and I kind of wish it would just go away. In that flamboyant manner, just poof! Bye! Let me choke you and just fling you off into the distance. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't like the neck. However, everything else from this point on was po positive. It grew on me quite substantially once I got to really start flying it. Let's go back to the back of the ship, and this is where things get a little bit weird for me, because the first thing I was really queuing on was how much this lower section of the ship, literally the whole lower section, is extremely crossfield class. Don't believe me? Take a look at the rear of the crossfield, take a look at the front of the crossfield, take a look at the side section of the crossfield, take a look at the elements on the crossfield. Saucer, sorry, the deflector on the crossfield. It's the crossfield lower hull, just smaller. So we've got a micro crossfield lower hull, and I love that. Does that mean there's a hangar bay at the back there? Maybe. What I do like, however, is the impulse array. The impulse array, which next to it seems to have some kind of another venting system. It might be a micro burst impulse array there to boost its speed, or it might be nothing important at all. But it's a nice bit of additional detailing, in, which gives it some life to it. Away from that, you get the odd nacelles, which working from back to front, has the warp grilling on the rear of the nacelle. Just past that, you got this what looks like a hatch or a breakaway point, which could possibly be a way for it to vent warp plasma. Obvious armoring over where the warp coils are. And what to me looks like a huge turbocharger on the thin side of the cell to boost up the um, warp efficiency. And then towards the front of the, the cell, you get the typical discovery design iteration with what to me looks like a great facade and a couple of fo of boosters or focus, whatever those two little cinders are supposed to be there to support it. I do feel like it's a good step between, it's like they couldn't quite improve on the NX's warp nacelle straight away so they had to add these two elements then they found a way to integrate them into the nacelle which is how we got to the Connie's nacelle that's the way I explain away the weird design difference of the Discovery Period ships. But overall, I do feel like the Nacelle looks really good. There's also that raised bit here, which I'm not 100% on if I like it. But considering what it holds on it. 
I can understand why it's big. My only issue with, with it being lumped up there, it is putting something critical right next to something critical, and I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that danger point. I've just noticed these skate pods. They're all underneath from the saucer. Now, there's not quite enough of them, but hey, at least it's escape pods. <laughs> <coughs> well, let's continue on. <laughs> and this continuing on part will... <sighs> this is where I get a bit iffy with the ship, because with its shape and design, it is very much like the centaur, except for it's dragging itself forwards more than the centaur is. The front of that secondary hole, to me, looks amazing. I love the lavender glowing elements behind the deflector, as well as along the pylon struts. But what I really love is just how in sync that deflector dish is. If you look at the whole thing, this ship really says it's pre-Walker class. If I had to guess, I would say Discovery's closer to the end of end of the design iteration just prior to the Constitution. So the Crossfield class is the last of its iteration, and you've got Cl Crossfield and Crossfield, Crossfield Experimental. Crossfield is what you would naturally would have seen, which is why it's got the older form like the rest of the ships. But the Crossfield Experimental is the ones that were refitted to use the Spore Drive Hub. Then you've got, going away from them, you've got ones like the Shepherd Class, the Magi Class. These ships are sort of just, they're newer, but they're not new. Further back, and you reach the Walker class. As stated, she's kind of old, but um, she's getting there. And then you go back a bit further, and you've got the Hoover class. That's where I feel like the Hoover class sits. It's the oldest of the um, Discovery era ships, and just looking at her gives you that feel. However, to me, that actually does her some positives. Lord knows it makes me like her more, so let's just give it that her that positive and roll with it, shall we? Okay, now let's get aggressive. And by let's get aggressive, let's talk weapons. Now, this is one of those spots where on this ship I'm... <sighs> I'm not sure... If I feel like she's overarmed or underarmed. If you look at other ships, the Magi, the one I predominantly fly, I've forgotten its class name, the Admiral ship, the um, Shepherd class, they're all really heavily armed. It just seems to be that period thing. But. Okay, this one, it's... Oh, the Mitz class. That's the one I fly. Yeah, the Mitz is really heavily armed. Eight forward launchers. Four aft. <laughs> this one is a sort of mild ground. With torpedoes, at least. But it is really heavily armed elsewhere. So, let's go over this, shall we? First of all, taking on the top view, where we, it almost looks like it's the Millennium Falcon. So... On the forward section of the ship, we have your typical emplacements for the saucers. The pair ball turrets, or ball, ball beam turrets, forward of the bridge and two either side. You then also have one directly at the nib of the saucer, right at the front. So that's a little addition there. Go towards the back of the saucer. And, uh, well, there's actually three of them there if you pay close attention, but I'm not sure if the ones down here were actually meant to be full turrets, so you've only got the two on the top of this sort of corridor section behind the bridge. That makes 
Six in total on top. Not bad. And all very centralized. Or down the central section of the ship, front to back. Go underneath. And she doesn't seem that bad, does she? Again, she's got the typical ones in the saucer, so the three around the sort of central sensory pod. You then have two at the back of the secondary hole. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Five, yeah? Just five. There are only five. There's seven. So what you can't see is that there's one pair on both nacelles. One here, one here. Sticking out like a sore thumb once you notice them. And that is what I mean by two critical components right next to each other. Luckily, it's not so bad on the rest of the ship. But there's seven on the lower section. And although they technically can only see straight forwards, because Lord knows they can't really see down. That's still frightening to see, and well, they do have a good angle across, I guess. So they can see down, but they're flying across the ship. Okay. To go from that, you then get the torpedo nodes. Uh, well, the torpedo pods, torpedo launchers, sorry, are quite interesting to me. See, you have this lovely slope design, which looks absolutely amazing above the deflector. I absolutely adore it, actually. I think that's the one redeeming quality around the neck area, is that. But then you've got my favourite thing going on with the two launchers at the back. They literally look like they can draw, well, they're, they're not actually meant to be out all the time, but they sort of raise up and they're like, okay, fire launchers in the back, okay, lowering launchers and fire. That's what they are to me, they're like drop launchers. <laughs> it looks really cool and I like it. <coughs> Excuse me. Overall, it's just an, really, considering her size, she's Quite well armed. I've been calling her a centaur. Oh my god, I've been calling her a centaur like ship this whole time. I've just realized she's not. She's nebula. She's a lot more like the nebula class. I wonder if that's where the inspiration actually came from. I mean, it's a pretty good design. It's rather niche to me, but hey, you can't win them all. In truth, if you took away the neck, I would be very happy with her. I do love where the RCS thrusters are positioned on there as well, so I'm not going to be making no arguments at that. What I will make an argument at, though, is where we're going next. We're going to turbocharge her across here now. Oh, gosh, she looks really weird when she flies because of that neck. That's what I don't like about her. She just looks weird flying. Her elements don't match up for me. So let's discuss her customization. Now, we've seen a bit of this already, based on the Edison. And you can see what I mean about the Edison is a far superior design. Slimmed out, sleeked out, much better. Way superior, in my opinion. <coughs> but, the Hoover's a quite nice ship herself. Now she's kind of standardly with the Aquarius bridge. Those that don't know the Aquarius, that's actually the heavy escort of the Odyssey class. Ironically, also comes with the Odyssey bridge. All bridge options are also available for her. She has the Hoover windows as well as another seven type variations you can choose from. A great palette of hull types with all six Discovery era Hole types give me some quite interesting aesthetic appearances. I'm not gonna lie, some of them I do believe look way better than others. He being one of my personal favorites on the ship, mostly because it gives the deflector a more angry appearance to it. But then I was always a fan of the uh, Walker almost from get go. You then have the NX and the NX refit. If you want to give it a um, lighter tone and that copper bridge okay yeah that's the bridge right there as well as a very interesting look to the lower hull sections not gonna lie I tend to fly it with the NX refit you've also got the type 0 which adds a very interesting pace of detail to the ship 
Type 0, for those that don't know, is the TOS hole type. If you're wondering why it seems so plain. We have the upgrade 8A and B, which is basically the motion picture era hole armor. You then got your type 1, 2, 3, which essentially had the TNG hole armors. Type 4, I have no idea what that's supposed to be from. 5, which is my favorite. 6, which is the, one of the latest iterations for STO. 7's STO. And of course, the veteran, if you have it available. I'm not going to lie on this shit, the veteran looks really stunning. Might be a reason to get the veteran. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm being a bit of a douche there. Aside from that, however, we should probably comment on customization you can do as well. So you have all the pattern standard and the ability to swap out parts between the Hoover and the Edison. Now, most of you will wonder why I still complain about it. It's because if you do want to fix the ship in the way I say fixes it, perfect. Almost. Um, well, you have to use the Edison lower hole, and it does sort of doesn't really fix in very well with it, does it? I mean, look at that. Now, if you didn't have to use the Edison lower hole, it, I would have loved it far more. But you can't win them all, can you? Could have at least had the neck holding near near the back. However, it is quite the interesting ship modification you go, mate. It looks hilarious when you put the Edison saucer on top of this ship, I won't lie. It was actually what made me notice of how much like the Gargaran the Edison saucer actually is. But yeah, there's a good it's a good section that you can do. Don't know if you'd want to throw those in the cells on it. Use the different pylons. Give them a lift! Now, now that whew, that half fixes it for me, but it doesn't quite do it right. I do like how the deflector looks more aggressive, however. <laughs> it actually kind of works and makes the deflector look even more angry and aggressive. Like it's about to zap you. But having said that, it's... Well, this is probably the perfect one we can do to the next big question for you guys. The bit that you guys have probably been waiting for. I know many of you guys really prefer this part to come first. But hey, I'll leave it to a second. Or I'll lose my train of thought. So, Discovery Vanity Shields. <clears throat> this should work really well on this ship, shouldn't it? In theory. Yeah, in theory. Uh, not so sure I like the way that looks in the nacelles. I mean, otherwise it's quite nice. Definitely has the ship looking a bit more shiny. How about <coughs> the Emperor's vanity shields? <clears throat> well, that actually draws in there the what we saw with the um, Type Zero, those weird strip linings. And it's interesting to see them, to be honest. Hmm. Don't like the deflector. I don't like how the sentry node looks just like the deflector, except for without the prongs. This looks alright though. I don't know, what's your thoughts, people? And the bridge looks. Oh god. Okay, section 31 vanity shield. What does it think? Again, it's done. It's got the deflector paneling on it. What's going on here? The deflector looks great, but that what we're seeing on these sentry nodes on the top of the bridge is exactly what you see on the D on the deflectors of some ships, and that is a bit weird. Well, maybe people were liking the cells a bit more like this though. I kind of like it. Aegis Covariant Shields. I 
Okay, I think they're all going to be bad at this rate with the sentry and bridge looking so weird each time. That's a strange looking in the cells. It's a very strange look. <laughs> time for some. Oh, what? Wow, this ship gets far more heavily assimilated than most do, don't it? Poor ship. That's very visible assimilation. Almost makes me feel like there was a lot of copy pasting done on the top of the ship. Maybe rushed into action? I mean, I don't blame them. Like I've already stated, I don't really give this shit too much for. Interesting addition point, and okay! That's a bit more life to the ship. That actually fits in really well with the ship's impulse drive, ironically. <clears throat> Excuse me! Do apologize. Okay, on to the Bajoran Defense Covariant Shields. Well, if I didn't know it's Federation, I could have definitely believed it was Bajoran. <laughs> Bit harsh for me, isn't it? I like the um, gold imprinting on the sides, on these side panel parts and parts of the um, nacelles. Looks really good, actually. Interesting. Time for counter command covariant shields. Okay, that all looks really awesome. That works for me quite well, actually. I don't know if it's just the source's design itself that makes it work, but it works really well for me. I quite like it. <coughs> Excuse me. Why am I coughing so much? Time for Delta Alliance Unimatrix. This one does not work for me. Nah, that one, that one, that one's getting a heavy pass. Dyson Regenerative Shields, okay. Now, the lavender sort of violet section actually blends quite well. He's flying over top of me. I'm going to leave that one to your guys' shout. I'm really not sure what to make of it. I want to say I like it. But I don't. I'm, I'm just not sure what to make of it. It's in, it's in a very meh ground. Iconium resistance resilient shields. Oh, it's... Normally, I call Iconium resistance not all that nice. I, I just say the cir Normally, it takes a circular body to work with the circular design, but. <clears throat> well, it's safe to say the sharp edges don't work with it anywhere. But. On the saucer, it's hideous! No! <laughs> <coughs> oh god, I actually really hate that one. Now for a mouthful, Lucari restores. Res I can never say the Lucari one first time. Lucari restoration in the intuitive regenerative shield array. Be pretty for me. Hey, I saw the rainbow. That time it was somewhere. 
I normally show something in the walk grills though, so it's weird that it's there. Okay, it's kind of okay, I guess. Mako Resilience Shield. I awkwardly like that. <laughs> oh, but I do not like the deflector. Everything but the deflector I like, I think. I really like what's happened to these sections now where I was saying it looks like it's got a weird extra turbocharger to go for the nacelle boost, like a micro booster. Actually, I did detailing in that one, did so that one gets an extra point. This looks really good, even, even the bridge I like on this one. Yeah, I'd probably definitely be flying the ship with the Folian if it was me. As you guys can probably guess, I don't really fly her very often. If I'm flying any of them, it's the uh, <coughs> Dominion one. From Folian on Nakura, should I say, to Romulan Advanced Prototype. It's got the same pattern points as the blasted Iconian one, which is hideous. It looks weird. However, I was about to say I might give it a pass, but no, the back of the um, saucer looks bad as well. Hmm, nope. Nope. Oh, guys. It's a pity. Could have been good. It could have been high wall. But it's not. Another mouthful. The temporal defense in the intuitive regenerative shield array. Why are the temple ones so mouthfully? Right, well. It's sparkly! Kind of pretty, but not. I kind of like it. Terran Tuspel's Convariant. Now, see, on every ship I've looked at before now, the Terran Tuspel's has been absolutely amazing on them. I do believe the Terran, or oh, sorry, the Emperor's Vanity though, actually looks better than the Terran Task Force in this situation. Which is a bit weird coming from me, because I'm a huge fan of this shield array, or shield visual. I do like the red pinstripe strip though. <coughs> I always go silent here, I do apologise. <laughs> Didn't help, it did not help. Oh, I really hate the dielectric oscillation shields. The green shields are horrible. Jemhadar! These are the Jemhadar shields that you get from one of the Jemhadar missions. Or oh, the missions where the Jemhadar have decided they want to attack us. Should I say? I say it's an interesting look, isn't it? But I don't like the deflector. Finally, the Riemann prototype. Or Riemann advanced prototype. 
Like the Romulans, but better. <laughs> Always better. Oh yes, it's way better. These are my favourite ones on this ship. Even makes it almost feel like he's got walk grills now. <laughs> It's a nice look, I will say that much. All shields looked at, and what the earth do you think? What do you think, guys, of this shit? <coughs> I'm really not sure what to make of her. I will say this, she is a design that will slowly grow on you. And... I do like aspects of her. I'll be honest, I prefer her entire secondary hull, pylons in the cell matrix a lot more than the rest of the ship. The saucer is kind of redeemable, the neck is not. Personally speaking, if I was going to score this ship, as I always do, 6 out of 10. Luckily, it's not an STO design, eh? Sorry, this is the one ship from Star Trek Discovery I do not like the design of. Bits of her grow me, bits of her I do like, but as a ship, her style, her look, 6 out of 10. The Nebula did it a mile time better. And this one could stand to grow and learn a few things from the Nebula. Which is sad to say. Because this ship was in the line to be a really good ship. It just had to get its stance and posture and actual profile a bit better, I think. But oh well, you can't win them all. What do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video, well, I hope you'll consider hitting the like. And I will give, you a, give out right now a massive thank you to you guys for supporting me by watching all the way to the end of this video. And to my patrons who support me on a more personal level. Also, if you guys wish to support this channel on a personal level, or wish to take a look at ways to keep in contact with me, you can either use the comments section where you can let me know exactly what you think of this ship, your views and opinions and thoughts on different aspects of the ship, what do you agree on and disagree on, let me know what you want me to review next, whether it be visual review or ship review. And, well, either in comment section or as linked below in the description in my Discord, just come and have a natter. <laughs> I'm now trying to become far more active in all of them, and I'm happy to say that so far Discord has gotten nicely active. I hope to see you guys there and about, and finally, thank you for watching guys, remember, live long and prosper, my friends, ciao for now, helm, punch it, that's not punching it!